Hey there! Welcome back to episode 3 guys and we're finally going to design our first aircraft and, uh, and go for a spin around the KSC. So the first thing we need to do though is we need to upgrade the runway. It's, uh, it's uh, only 75,000 so we have, uh, we have plenty of funds to spare to go ahead and do that. And the reason we're doing that is because I don't know how you guys have uh, have managed uh, with your with your aircraft taking off from the dirt runway, but I find it all but impossible, especially with that early landing gear uh, being the only thing you can work with. In fact, uh, most people actually take off from the grass beside the runway instead of the runway itself, rather than do that. Uh, Rather than do that silly little routine, I thought we'd just go ahead and upgrade the runway first. So now we're ready to uh, to jump into the space plane hangar and design our first aircraft. So it's surprisingly easy um, to build your first aircraft. A lot of people have, have trouble um, with aircraft. Now, it's not so easy to fly them but it is uh, relatively easy to build them. So let's uh, just put together something very, very simple here for the sake of our first aircraft. And uh, I might do a time lapse here uh, as I throw this together. A lot of people also find using the starter Juno jet engine uh, that they have difficulty, but uh, but in the right configuration, even two of these engines will be uh, more than enough to have you flying around with a with a plane as long as you keep it relatively small and light. So one thing to keep in mind here guys when you're building an aircraft and that is you want your center of mass to be uh, as close as possible to your center of lift. Uh, slightly in front is good so what we have here is not uh, not too bad. Ideally you want them uh, fairly close even if these two balls were touching here. Uh, that would be a, a configuration that gives you a lot of control over over your aircraft. All right, here we have a. Uh, very simple, uh, very simple plane, our first plane ever. We've kept it uh, quite light, you know, under seven tons, and uh, part count is good. We got uh, only 25 out of 30. So let's go take this for a test drive. Okay, so for our first flight, we're going to keep things very simple. We'll just uh, take off straight out to sea off the end of the runway, uh, get up to three, four thousand meters, get a little bit of distance uh, from the KC, do a quick loop around, and try to bring the plane back uh, to the runway if possible, but uh, certainly in the neighborhood of the KC without, uh, without destroying the vehicle and killing Jeb would be considered a success. SAS on, throttle up, and uh, away we go. Now as I mentioned a lot of people think these Junos are uh, 
pretty useless engines, but uh, you'll see here we will get off the ground in no time with a small light aircraft like this and four of those engines. Yeah, no trouble getting airborne at all. In fact, it's important that we do uh, pull up once we're, I don't know, 70 meters per second. I think you want to be starting to pull back on the stick and trying to get airborne because these uh, these wheels are not very durable wheels and if you would have left the uh, the aircraft on the ground doing 90 or 100 meters per second you're gonna have a high probability of having a failure in one of these wheels so uh, that's another reason to, uh, to try to take off as soon as possible all right so we're we're up over 3,000 feet now, so we can probably throttle down a bit. Down to 50% and level off. Just gonna try to, uh, try to coast out a little bit away from the KSC, and then we'll, uh, we'll do a turn and see what we can come up with as far as getting back to, uh, getting back to the runway. The other thing we may want to do is, uh, turn off the tail fin here. It's a large fin, it's great for stability, but with a small airplane like this, uh, it can it can jerk you around a fair bit if you leave it active, so let's see if that is sufficient uh, sufficient distance to start our turn. Wings over, pull back on the stick, try to get an aggressive as turn as possible without losing too, too much altitude. not just going to point at the KSC here. I'm going to try to come all the way around till we're, till we're due north, uh, run perpendicular to the end of the runway, and then I'll try uh, another 90 degree bank once I'm, uh, once I'm even with it to, to get lined up. So we'll see if that works or not. to uh, pretty close to north now let's see if we can if we can bring her around looks like we overshot a little bit try to make an adjustment here if we can Let's see. And with these wings at this point, I think it's uh, I think it's safe to say we're gonna overshoot the runway. We'll give it our best try. quite fast. In fact, I may be better off to, uh, to take another pass at this. Carrying too much altitude as we approach the, the runway. Uh, if I would have took a steeper descent into the runway, then I would have just had way too much speed. 
and uh, and we would have crashed the plane anyway. So we'll take a little tour over the grasslands here before we turn around and take another crack at uh, at bringing her back in safe. Of course, we've got tons and tons of fuel. Could fly around all day, except uh, I think we've I think we've proven that this airplane is uh, is a fine little airplane to start with. Uh, handles well, has more than enough power, so uh, no need to uh, no need to waste a bunch of time. Let's get some more altitude here. Try another turn and see if we can bring it in this time. All right, we'll try to bleed off some altitude a little bit earlier than we did last time. See what we can do about getting lined up. Still too high. Bring the engine way back. Do got to be careful though. I might just be better off to set her down beside the runway. too fast here. Carrying lots of speed. Giving me some control to not to not lose altitude too quickly. Whoa. I think we'll consider that a highly successful landing. Uh, not the most elegant, and I'm very, very surprised those wheels uh, took the stress of that spin out. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna take it because Jeb's still alive. Let's do a recovery. So we did spend a little bit of money upgrading the runway, um, and now that we have a plane that uh, we got a little bit of confidence in, let's go into mission control because we saw earlier a couple of these observations uh, surveys that I think are under a certain altitude. Here's one here, take a crew report in flight below 90. 15,000 meters. So there's one. Let's see if we can find another one. Above 17, above 18, below 16.4. There's another good one. And uh, the reason I picked those is because they're fairly decent in terms of completion and advance rewards uh, get more than more than 20,000 for each of them and because they are below this altitude uh, with the starter plane that we just uh, took for a spin I don't think we get anywhere near 19,000 uh, meters out of that aircraft uh, so we needed to uh, we needed to pick some of the ones that were below the, the height threshold rather than above so let's go do those two quickly. That'll give us another uh, another quick test flight with our with our plane to see if we've got any wrinkles we want to work out, and it will get us another forty some thousand funds back into our back into our bank account here, and then we'll go from there. Same plane, the only thing is I think I'll turn these off here in the 
in the space plane hangar. Um, do we want anything else? I don't think so. I mean, we could start loading up with science, but we do have to be careful about our part count. And we're going to need to upgrade the space plane hangar before we start trying to make more complex uh, aircraft. So I think this is good enough for now. Let's go. Uh, let's go get some contract rewards. Okay, so. We're going to use a couple mods here, guys. We're going to start using some mods, and I'll show you uh, show you what those are. What we want to do is use Waypoint Manager. And you can see it has brought up the two contract waypoints we've already, uh, we've already picked here. So if we activate that one, uh, that, not the one off to the east, it must be. Yep, there it is. It's to the north. And that means the second one is the one to the east. There we go right there. What you can do by using Waypoint Manager you can get yourself a heading to the waypoint. So if we use that in conjunction with the pilot assistant mod for autopiloting then it's gonna make our life a lot uh, a lot easier. So I'll show you how that works here now. Both these mods were covered in our KSP Easy Mod series where I did mod highlights and uh, you can go check those episodes out if you want to see how these two mods work in detail. For now I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you how to use these in uh, in conjunction with each other. So SAS on, throttle up, brake off, and away we go. Just like last time, we're going to start to pull up as soon as we can. Beautiful. Alright. So now one of the things we can do is set a, a constant speed, a constant throttle control with the speed. So if we were to say 170 target speed, you can see it automatically adjusts the throttle. It's going to uh, it's going to make whatever adjustments it needs to make to get us right around the uh, the 170 meters per second. Then, of course, the next thing we can do is we can also set an altitude control getting close to uh, 3,000 here so if we wanted to say 3,500 and then lock that in as our target altitude uh, you can see it's going to start to level us off here and of course it will work with all both these things in conjunction so it's going to now work to keep this altitude and this speed and there you can see how uh, there you can see how it automatically adjusts it. Now the final thing we're going to want to do, because our waypoint manager is telling us the heading to our contract, uh, we can go ahead and put in a heading of 108. So, well, let's try again. Let's try 109. Lock that in. And the plane will now take us to that heading while maintaining the already set altitude and speed. So Pilot Assistant is a great little autopilot. It makes life uh, a lot easier and we're going to use it extensively as we go on our uh, on our odyssey around Kerbin to look at all the different sites I promised you guys uh, from the start of this Let's Play series. So once we, uh, once we get into range here, we'll activate our experiment, which I think is a crew report. And, uh, and then we'll set our next waypoint. We'll use pilot assistant to uh, get us the appropriate heading. And then we'll uh, return to the KSC. I'm just waiting for the message to display that we're in the, uh, we're in the area for our contract. Entering the area, so let's do a crew 
report. Let's keep that experiment. And there you can see we've successfully completed that contract. Beautiful. Now, what we need to do is go back into Waypoint Manager and activate our other contract waypoint. And there you can see it uh, off to the north. The heading, and we'll have to make a couple of these adjustments because uh, as the plane turns, uh, we may continue to, uh, to slip off the heading. But we'll start, it's decreasing, so we'll do 323, set that as a target heading. So pilot assistant just does a, a great job of making life easier. I'm not, I'm not uh, killing my fingers uh, on the keyboard here trying to make a hundred little adjustments to get myself lined up here uh, all the while uh, adjusting the throttle and uh, and, and trimming the uh, trimming the altitude so you know I can't say enough about this mod love this mod and using it in conjunction with waypoint manager to uh, to get your headings and line yourself up is uh, is just great so you can see we have uh, moved off a bit so I'm gonna say uh, 314 as our new heading it's going to continue to continue to turn and come into uh, come right into that uh, waypoint nose first here. Just going to be uh, just going to be beautiful. So you don't have to keep the pilot assistant window open. You can uh, you can close that off. It's going to stay active. Uh, if you do make any manual adjustments, though adjust the set values in those three areas of heading altitude and speed so for instance if I was right now to manually throttle up uh, not only would the plane accelerate but it would move the target speed setting higher than what it is right now So let's just uh, do a little time acceleration here because we're still almost 50 kilometers uh, out from that waypoint. Pretty, pretty much due north of the KSC, so if we set this to 180, we're going to be uh, getting ourselves in the right ballpark of getting home. And we've taken a pretty casual turn here, so... Uh, I'm going to have to reset this to probably 170 to get us heading heading straight into the KSC. And now is as good a time as any to uh, lower our altitude and as you can see the uh, autopilot has throttled us right down but uh, no need to panic it will adjust assuming that your plane has the uh, sufficient control surfaces it will uh, it will not drive you into the ground. So 
so it would be easy enough guys to uh, to let the autopilot here take me uh, parallel here off to the right fly out a ways do a 180 degree turn and come back in on the uh, on the runway but I think uh, for the sake of time uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and land in the grass here uh, just behind the KSC I'll just take us straight in Another successful spin out. That is what I call. That's what I call great landing, Jeb. We'll uh, we'll we'll take it. We'll take it. All right, guys. We've uh, successfully done a couple test flights. Um, one of which we gained some uh, some nice contract funds back from. I think we are ready to uh, to start having a look around this planet Kerbin. There's some uh, some very interesting sites here, guys. I have some waypoints that I'm going to load in with uh, with Waypoint Manager, and uh, and we're going to take a nice little cruise around uh, around Kerbin. It's going to be exciting. So. Let's go back to the space plane hangar. All right, we've still got our plane loaded, so let's ready to launch. All right, before we get started, let's have a look at the waypoints that we're going to explore. So if you go into the settings, you can import custom waypoints, which is something I've set up previously. And as you can see, we have seven new waypoints that we're going to explore. And if we switch into map mode, you can see they're scattered across the planet. And uh, a far departure from the area that we've been confined to so far here around the KSC. I would say our first, uh, our first waypoint that we'll look at is probably here, the Desert Temple. So we'll go due west. And then we'll, we'll meander north up over the pole and go from there. So depending on how much fuel we have is, uh, is where we're going to end up ditching and splitting this, uh, this journey probably into, into two missions. But we'll see how that goes. For now, let's, uh, let's get started. So we'll select Desert Waypoint first. That will give us our, our heading and distance indicators up here at the top. And uh, I'd say, I'd say we're ready to go. SAS, throttle up. Right away, let's get ourselves set up here with, uh, let's say 140 for our target speed, and I don't know, 2500 for our, for our target altitude. Once the plane has settled into uh, into that autopilot profile then we'll get ourselves turned around and headed over to the desert temple we may actually want to increase our speed just a little bit Let's begin a nice gentle turn here.
Alright, so if we look at our heading to our temple, we have 263.6. So let's type that in our target heading box. And activate autopilot. So we're now on full autopilot. Uh, heading altitude and speed. And now all we have to do is wait. So one of the things we can do is we can go to time acceleration and uh, I'll probably do some some post-production editing to cut out uh, to either speed up and or cut out parts of this journey because we are on a uh, on a fairly long drive to to Desert Temple here 700 kilometers so here we go As you can see guys, our current heading is going to take us over these uh, low mountain areas here. So I just wanted to crank our altitude up uh, just a little bit, maybe 3,000. After a long flight across the uh, the ocean between continents, we can finally see our waypoint indicator uh, coming up over the, the curve of Kerbin, and we're approaching the desert landmass here in front of us with uh, 140 kilometers to go. And now's as good a time as any to go ahead and uh, drop our target altitude as well. And we're now 10 kilometers out, guys. So what I'm going to do is uh, take us out of autopilot. flyby of the desert temple and give you guys a good look at this interesting area. Do one more slow pass. Make sure you guys all had a good look before we head on to our next target. So tucked away here in these in these desert mountains, we have a an ancient Kerbal temple and a uh, and an interesting little statue in front of it too. So have a look for that as we go by on our second pass. So as we said, a very interesting, very interesting little site tucked away in the mountains here in the middle of this desert. 
Uh, it's a long flight to get here across the ocean, and I think where we'll go next is the Crater Island. So let's bring our throttle down a bit. Pull our waypoints back up. And select Crater Island. Back to autopilot here, and our heading is 292. This is it here, you can see, yeah. Uh, of course, it's not really underground, it's just, uh, given that it's still 400 kilometers away, it's just off the curve of, it's just off the end of Kerbin's planetary curve there, so it will rise as we get, as we get closer. now crossed over that vast desert and as you can see we're heading into uh, heading into an area here that's a little more lush a little more green so as we approach the east side of the crater rim here we may need to get even higher I've adjusted up to 3,000 already but we uh, Looks like we're going to need to get even higher to get over this ridge on the, uh, like I said, on the eastern side of the rim. So let's, uh, let's adjust up again another thousand feet. And I don't think I'm happy with 4,000. I think we may need 5,000 just to be sure. We've come an awfully long way to end up smacking into a mountain before we even hit our second point of interest. I'm going to unlock our heading here, just so I can swing a little bit north of this last little rise up in front of us here. I think we would have cleared it, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And there's our island off in the distance. You can see now, if it wasn't obvious from space, this is a massive area, this, this crater impact zone. And uh, we are now on the outer rim, and there's the island in the middle, still some uh, almost 90 kilometers away. So, uh, so this is one big crater. So for a crater that's almost, let's say, in the neighborhood of 200 kilometers across, uh, on, uh, on a planet like Kerbin that's only around 3,700 kilometers in circumference, that is, a, that is a significant crater. That would be a crater that, if you scale that up to be uh, Earth-sized, that would be a crater that would more than obliterate uh, Australia. So the coast to coast distance of Australia is, would be less than the uh, the rim to rim distance of this crater if it was scaled up and put on Earth. So since we're getting very low on fuel here guys, what we're gonna have to do is try to land here on this island. And it's going to be tricky, but we are going to give it a, we're going to give it a go. So 
we've turned our autopilot off. I'm going to aim for this uh, highland area straight off the nose of the aircraft. And even though I know it's causing me to spin out, I am going to put the brakes on now because uh, I don't have a lot of room to work with there. This is going to be challenging. No, I'm going to actually have to come around. Of course, our fuel situation is not the best. There, I'm going to try to come around and land right in this right in this area right here. Definitely going to be better off to uh, land on the runway, or sorry, land on the island uh, on its on its long axis rather than rather than its short axis like I had just come in on so let's give this another go need to be able to feather our height up so that our vertical distance is not too great oh this is going to be a problem I think oh We're going to say that that was a very fortunate, very fortunate landing. We managed to kill enough of our vertical speed to not knock those those flimsy little wheels off the plane. And uh, that is surely what's responsible for us surviving that, surviving that landing. So here we are on our second, second target of our Kerbin Odyssey right smack in the middle of this beautiful crater and uh, we don't have enough fuel to try to get to another waypoint so what we're going to do here is recover the craft and we're going to pick this up again in the next episode so until then guys let's hope Jebediah gets a quick rescue from his friends at the KSC so we can uh, relaunch again on the next leg of our Kerbin Odyssey so we'll see you next time take care